Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So, quick show of hands. I, I heard everybody's background. How many of you are um, uh, affiliated with a particular law firm or, or, uh, or do a lot of work with one particular law firm or a lawyer? Yeah? Yeah. As opposed to really focusing on one person. Okay. How many of you have done a GMO appeal? Well, you're going to hear from them, <laughs> right? Um, so I'm going to talk to you about Jimmo, and I wish that I could talk to you and say, oh, we've figured out the kind of the magic bullet that's really going to make Jimmo work, but we haven't. And so really that's what I am hoping is that this presentation will actually lead to some other steps that I think, you know, uh, we as elder, lawyer, elder, uh, elder lawyers, and, and you know, I'm, I'm on the public policy group at, at uh, NAIL, the Elder Lawyers Association, and you folks are really interested in. So. Um, my clients are Frank and Mary. Whenever I do presentations, I'm talking about Frank and Mary and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. What's great about my audience <laughs> is that they get that joke, right? Um, and, and their goal is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die, and they want to be buried in the backyard, right? And then they want to leave everything to their spouse, and then everything is going to get divided up among the kids. And they're trying to figure out how to do that. Um, and if they get hurt um, and need to go to the hospital, they really want to come home. Right? But some of them are going to get stuck in nursing homes. And if they're in nursing homes, they really want to get care. They don't want to be treading water. They really be wanting to be, they want to be staying physically healthy. They want to be getting care. And I think it is in that context that the Jimmo case has so much relevance. So Jimmo, um, you have all, I'm sure, heard a lot about it. Uh, it was, you all know, uh, how many of you att have attended a presentation regarding Jimmo at this point? Okay. So you all know that, um, that for years uh, uh, CMS had taken the position that you needed to be getting better, or at least all of their uh, MACs had been taking the position that uh, you needed to be getting better in order to be getting Medicaid, Medicare, um, whether you were in a nursing home or whether you were at home. Now, interestingly, that wasn't anywhere in the federal law, in the Medicare law. Uh, it also wasn't any place in their regulations. It just was. It was just was. This was an amazing phenomenon. As a matter of fact, and, and, and over time, there had been challenges to that standard, the so-called improvement standard. As a matter of fact, there had actually been two federal court cases uh, in other parts of the country, both district court cases, and therefore not binding on anybody else, uh, in which individual plaintiffs had, had challenged the standard and had won both cases. And in both cases, CMS did not appeal because they didn't want it to become the standard that was going to affect an entire circuit. They just let it go. And they said, we're not going to acknowledge that that's correct. We're simply not going to appeal. And so it continued until finally uh, the Center for Medicare Advocacy. Anybody here dealt with the Center for Medicare Advocacy? I think great. Yeah. Allie Beers is like, great. Margaret's great, right? Um, finally, they said, no, we want something that's going to apply nationwide. And so they basically did a class action suit together with um, legal services in Vermont and also a set of national players, the Alzheimer's Association, National MS Society, a set of others. The people, you know, you've got clients that have got those diseases. So it's the people that understood that this was like of great significance. Um, and they challenged and they did it based so that they knew, because since it was, it was class action, that it was going to have, it was going to be nationally it had to be, there was going to be a national standard here. Uh, and of course, CMS uh, did a, filed a motion to dismiss the case, saying, but wait a minute, that's not our standard. Right? It's nowhere in the regulations. See, where, show us a regulation that says that it's the improvement standard. Uh, and, 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 but in response, these folks basically said, yes, but we all know that that's the standard. And they gave, they, they, they had collected up a lot of information from particular cases and showed in all of those cases that folks who weren't improving weren't getting Medicare because that was the standard. Everybody knew that that was the standard. So, fi so they lost, the, the CMS lost the motion to get the case dismissed and then knew they were in trouble because this thing was going to go to trial and it was going to be a, a uh, that was going to set, 
it was going to be a judgment that was going to be effective nationally. So instead, they settled. The settlement was approved uh, in January of 2013, and it, the settlement was uh, to be effective uh, in January of 2014. Now, in that interim period, what CMS was supposed to do is they were supposed to change their manual uh, in ways that clearly reflected the fact, that positively reflected the fact that the improvement standard is not the standard, that the, the question is not whether you're going to get, you're going to improve or not, but uh, whether services are needed in order to maintain, prevent, or slow deterioration. So either just even to maintain yourself, but certainly if you can show that a person who is other, was otherwise going to deteriorate more rapidly would deteriorate less rapidly with those services. That's one. But second, um, the services had to be skilled services. So they said, well, you know, we're not changing that. I mean, that's the point of Medicare. That's the reason why Medicare has been so useless in terms of dealing with a lot of our clients, folks who have got dementia and whose, whose needs do not rise to the level or, or at least it has been thought, do not rise to the level of quote unquote skilled care. And so that was the new standard. Uh, and so um, they, they basically, they changed their manuals. Um, and if you go on the Medicare website, you, the CMS website, you can download uh, all 1,700 pages of the manual. <laughs> and, and in there, you know, you will find changes. The change in the section that deals with, S, with SNFs. Uh, this, the section that, that, that deals with um, uh, uh, outpatient care and the section that deals with the, the so-called 60-day plans, home care and homebound care. So it, it, we, you all, and once again, I'm telling you things, you've been to presentations on this and that you've already heard. So um, uh, th th there needs to be professional, there needs to be a, a need for skill uh, and it has to be safe and effective. and and. The, 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 the nurse or therapist has to be needed either to provide the care or to supervise the care or to develop a plan. Uh, and it is regardless of whether there is improvement. Um, and so for Mary and Frank, who really, really, really want to stay in their home, the question is kind of what's the effect? Well, the biggest effect, of course, is on the 60-day plans, right? Because the, the nice thing about the, the problem with um, um, the standard as far as nursing homes are concerned was that you're still limited to 100 days, right? Um, but whereas the 60-day plans, if it could be demonstrated that there is a need for skilled services ongoing regarding that, uh, that dementia, that person with dementia symptoms, right? These plans can go on forever because you don't have to be showing that you're improving. You need to be showing that you're staying, th that, that the service is necessary in order to stay the same or in order to be able to get better. Of course, and, and you, know, you know, that's the standard, right? In order to get those 60-day plans, you need to be homebound. That's a kind of a separate issue. You'd have to need the skilled care, but then it, things are renewable forever. Now, the interesting thing I'm just going to mention to you, if, as you were, if you wanted to go through those 1,700 pages, the interesting thing that you would learn uh, is that CMS, you could see in the back of their minds, they were saying, this could cost us a lot of money. You know, this change would cost us a lot of money. So we need to figure out how we can make this money neutral, right? So what they did is for not just the cases that would be affected by GEMO, but for all cases, they said, first of all, we are going to substantially increase the documentation requirements regarding what services we're going to pay for. Secondly, we're going to say um, no more generalities in the documentation. No patient tolerated treatment well, caregiver instructed in medication management, no continue with plan of care, right? We want to hear about, and, and this is actually, the, you can find the wording in the, uh, in the, uh, in the CMS manual, and I'd be glad to get you that, those, th those pieces of the manual. Um, we want to hear what actually happened on the time that the skilled visit occurred. We want to know the background to the case that caused that work to occur. And we want to know from the person who is doing that work why, in their opinion, the work is going to continue to be necessary, right? So that's a whole lot of stuff that wasn't appearing in the notes uh, any place, right? And they were being clear that this was always the standard, that, that the, the mere fact that a, a family member is refusing to do something which would otherwise not be defined as skilled care does not make it skilled care. 
so that the, 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 if a family member is, if you, is saying, we're not going to do that stuff, but that stuff would typically be done by a home care person or could be done by someone else other than an OT, a PT, or a nurse, right? It's not going to be covered because it's still not um, skilled care.